Hi everybody and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Anyone that's watched me before, you may have noticed I've got new hair. <laughs> so I'm not used to it yet. Comments below. If you think it's okay, let me know. If you think it's terrible, put it back to brown. Let me know. Be honest, be blunt. That's what I need. Um, to be honest, I like the end bits. The, the end bits are like a nice the lighter rose gold that I wanted but she's done the top bits a little bit too purpley ideally I wanted some natural rose gold just little bits in my hair um, so it all blended in nicely together and it's kind of all pink right now so it's a little bit much I think it's a bit much um, and I've been asking for people's opinions on social media the general census I think people like it but if you look back on my previous vlogs I had very dark brown hair before so it's a bit of a change i'm getting used to it so bear with me guys so let's get back to what we were talking about so the haas workshops are amazing every student should be aiming to get into the haas scheme because it's fantastic and the amount of opportunities you're gonna get and these workshops are just incredible so Wednesday we had the coaching and mentoring and it was just again a fantastic experience and I learned so much from this workshop. So we started off by Kev t talking us through how to successfully coach and mentor somebody and by you should be asking someone rather than telling someone. So you should be asking open, more open questions to people. So if they, someone's coming to you for advice or problems, you should be asking the, you know, how, why, what, tell me. Um, th and these sort of questions make you feel as a person, if someone's asking you, okay, so why is that? It gives that person a sense of empowerment. So you're really empowering someone by asking those questions. They're gonna feel really valued and like you're actually interested in them and what they've got to say and to listen to them. And something really interesting from the session that I found out about the word mentor and where it actually originates from is from actually from Greece. And so when the Greeks went to war, the um, children were left with what they call this mentor. Actually reading up about the role of the mentor, the mentor was actually um, a teacher sort of person that prepared the sons for what would happen if the family member died out at war. So preparing them for those responsibilities and to train them in a way. I was really interested about it. So I just had a little Google, had a look up about it. And one of the sons of Odysseus, Odysseus, I hope I've said that right. Um, he actually went to a, the goddess Athena and she was his mentor and she guided him. I thought that was really cute and really nice way of actually explaining what a mentor could mean to somebody. We also spoke about the differences between what a coach is and what a mentor is and some of the descriptions that we came up with were that coaching's more of a, it's a do it now, you know, you're being trained or and you're being shown something or a specific thing relevant to the now rather than something that's over a period of time, which is what we think mentoring is. And mentoring is something that you're sort of learning and building up over a long stretch of time rather than here and now learning. Anybody, anybody's got any comments on this? Anyone's got any other ideas what you think coaching or mentoring the differences is? Please comment below. Your input will be amazing. I'd love to hear what everyone thinks about that because there's no right or wrong in this. Everything means something different to everybody. It's the way our brains are. It makes us unique and individual. I keep saying this. So I really love hearing what other people think about these things. So please comment. And then when speaking about mentoring, we talked about the famous quote about give the man a fish. So you give a man a fish and he can feed himself for the day. But if you teach a man how to fish, he can feed himself for a whole lifetime. And I think that's such a great quote when we're talking about mentoring, because you don't want to just give somebody the answer. You want to coach them and mentor them through it so that they sort of realise how to do these things on their own. If someone's coming to you a problem, you don't want to just be like, okay, here's how to solve the problem. You want to s question that person in a way that enables them, empowers them to come to the conclusion themselves. I think that's just such an incredible thing to do. And it's not really something I've thought about before. So just to enable us to under get an understanding of how to do that, Kev and Jackie both set us up some tasks. We were split up into two separate groups. Kevin took one side, Jackie took the other side of the groups. 
and they told us a genuine problem that they had and they wanted help with and we had to use all these techniques of the how, the what, the why just to coach and mentor them through the problem so that they can come to some sort of realisation on their own and a solution and this was just amazing, I loved getting involved I was a bit stuck at one point, I was sort of thinking oh gosh, what can I ask? Like this is such a simple solution but how can I make them realise that? And it's qu actually quite difficult, I found, to sort of think, okay, so what am I gonna ask? What am I gonna say? So it's definitely something that I'm going to need practice with. I'm gonna need to practice with friends, maybe, with other colleagues, my partner, probably. And hopefully I'll get better at becoming my own mentor and coach because ideally that's what I wanna aim to be when I'm a qualified nurse. I would love to be that good mentor and coach for somebody else, for my own student one day. And then we had another task where Kev gave us these diagrams and I'll show you mine because I've got mine at the minute. We had to pair up with somebody, we had to sit back to back so we couldn't see each other and I had to explain this diagram to the other person so that they could draw what I could see but without them seeing it so I had to sort of exp explain it and be really specific so that they could get inside my head and draw exactly what I could see without them seeing. Does that make sense? It was a great task. I thought it went really, really well. And we had to mark ourselves out of 10 and we gave ourselves a seven. So I think we did well. The only downfall areas we had, I think, was I think I was trying to be too specific. So I was saying things like, oh, this is two centimeters, this is six centimeters, because my two centimeters is like, okay, that's about two centimeters to me. But what two centimeters means to me doesn't mean that the other person has a clue what two centimeters is, or if that's even right. I still haven't measured that. Is that two centimeters? Probably not. I need a ruler. But so, I think that's where we went wrong, where I, I maybe could have asked that person what does two centimetres mean to you? But all in all, our diagrams were pretty much spot on, to be honest. The, one of the lines was a bit wonky and went through the other little bit, but that's the only problem. I, realistically, it, it, it was kind of spot on. I think we did really well as a team and it was just good to see um, the different communication that you can have with somebody so that was really good and I'll go and show you the thing now. Okay so this is the diagram, can you see that? Look how complicated that is, I, was, I looked at it initially and I was like how am I going to explain this to somebody, like how, where do I even start on this thing? So that was it and I started here with the small square and I worked my way up, across, down, there and then this part, so I'll explain the square, square, straight line, triangle, and then back to the circle, line. Really hard to do. I suggest if everybody should do this with somebody because it is a really good exercise. I came home and I did it with my partner. So this is what my partner drew. That's apparently that. <laughs> Can I just say she does not listen to me? <laughs> Trying to explain things and no, there was no listening skills from that end of the room. So, <laughs> but it was a great exercise. It was so much fun to come and test it out on somebody else. It was really good. And I, I really advise other people to do it and try it with their partners or family members or friends. It's quite fun and it's very hard. So well done to Jackie, because I had Jackie teamed up with me. So well done to Jackie for being amazing and getting it. So all in all, this session has been amazing. I've learned so much. I've got to practice more about my mentor and coaching. And it's literally, it's all about empowering somebody else, giving that power to them, working together in a partnership with somebody and just enabling them to become their best self as well as you being your best self. So all in all, HARS is amazing. I love these workshops so much. If you're not part of the HARS scheme yet, you can be, so don't worry about it. Please sign up, please come to the workshops because it's fantastic and you're really missing out if you have signed up and you're not coming to these workshops. I just, I love every single minute of it. So thank you HARS team. Thanks to Kevin and Jackie because you're fantastic. I love being part of this team. I'll see you all next week for a new vlog I'm all about my week. It's my first week back. I'm so excited. I can't wait to get started on this next module and I shall see you all next week. Bye.